And that's the thing is like, that's a hustle. That's not like a practice. That's not something that you become a master of. Hustles, you don't, you don't come become a master of a hustle. You become a master of your own process. Yo, what's up with it y'all? It's JD and I'm back with another quick video. In today's video, I wanna talk a little bit about faith. A little bit how calisthenics and spirituality and pretty much everything is all connected, really. And uh, first and foremost, as a matter of fact, what I was planning on doing, checking and seeing what is the actual definition of faith. And it says here, faith is complete trust or complete confidence in someone or something. A strong belief in God or the doctrines of the religion based on spiritual apprehension rather than proof. So basically, you know, what I take from that is that faith means that you think something is going to work out, something is going to pan out, you know, based on your gut intuition more than basically something that's proven by scientific fact. And I think that's something that is extremely prevalent when it comes down to calisthenics. I also think that's something that's extremely prevalent when it comes down to life. And basically I think calisthenics, what I love about it so much is that calisthenics is pretty much the opposite of instant gratification. You know, a lot of times people go into a lot of endeavors and I could say for myself for the longest time, I was like this too. I didn't want to do anything unless it bare fruit extremely quick you know i started doing an airbnb business around the time i was like 28 or 29 years old and i started making money immediately and that was pretty much that wasn't the first time i went into business for myself but it was one of the first times i ever you know tried some type of larger scale hustle and it worked out so you know it kind of gave me a false sense of reality in terms of like kind of I would say get rich quick or get rich overnight type of thing and you know I was making a good amount of money when I was doing it and like I said I just pretty much went to Japan tried it out and it was an immediate success and I kept on making more money and more money from it but in all actuality that's really not the way that most things in life work and I would say that our greatest accomplishments in life and our greatest successes in life are never going to materialize overnight. So what calisthenics is for me is basically like one giant progression. It's basically starting off from the ground and kind of working your way up through all sorts of micro victories. And you might have some bigger goals in mind that you want to accomplish, whether that be, you know, some type of advanced calisthenic skill, whether that's some type of advanced physique where you know you put on a bunch of muscle mass or you get ultra shredded or whatever it may be we all come into calisthenics and we all work out for different reasons but for me it's more so on a performance basis or for me it's more so on the performance side of things and for me it's always been about acquiring new skills and you know pushing my body body past limits that you know I never really thought were actually possible and recently I've been doing some movements that, you know, I never really would have thought to even try and I never would have even thought were actually possible for me. And I kind of was thinking about this earlier and I was just thinking that, you know, this has been like pretty much, I would say almost a five year process for me. And a lot of the movements that I've been basically accumulating into my fitness portfolio or my calisthenics portfolio lately have really just been coming in batches. And, you know, from setting PRs and handstand push-ups and, you know, PRs and weighted calisthenics to now I'm like right on the, basically the one yard line of completing the straddle planche. I've been doing 90 degree handstand push-ups and those have actually gotten to the point where they pretty much feel easy for me. And, you know, I'm not saying any of this type of stuff to brag, it's just that all these things have just come at once for me. And when I look back on, you know, training, you know, and I see people who are kind of in that more intermediate, you know, beginner intermediate level. And a lot of times it can be extremely frustrating. And I think about it a lot of times when it came down to me starting my calisthenics journey. Just like I said, calisthenics is, is like a spiritual experience. But if you really think about it, everything in life is pretty much a spiritual experience. 
and everything in life is pretty much connected because one lesson that you can learn from calisthenics you can take into any other area of life and i think about this a lot of times with calisthenics that there's been plenty of times where i've hit like some major plateaus and also many times where i've actually taken like a few steps backwards and you know those are times where i feel like we're all being tested we're all being tested to see how much faith we actually have in the process we're being tested to see how much faith we actually have in ourselves. We're being tested to how much faith and how much belief we actually have in ourselves in general. Because, you know, it's really easy to give up on, I would say, calisthenics training as a whole at certain points. And there's also, it's also pretty easy to give up on certain movements at a certain point. It's like, I would say that's one aspect of calisthenics I've learned over the years. It's like, if you try a movement or you start training for a movement that's too advanced and you start training at too early of a stage in your calisthenics journey it's extremely easy to get discouraged it's like for instance like i said recently i've been training for a straddle planche and eventually i want to be able to do a full planche but if i would have started training for that movement maybe a year into my calisthenics journey and i was like hell bent on getting that movement there's a possibility I might have even quit doing calisthenics because I was so far away from that movement. But taking it step by step, and this is kind of the way we have to take things in life as well, and this kind of ties back into the delayed gratification versus instant gratification. Being happy and you know, being content with accumulating these micro victories along the way. For me, maybe my first victory in calisthenics was being able to complete the muscle up. And that really didn't take that long for me just because I had been doing pull-ups pretty much my entire time, my entire life of training, which was from like the age of 16 years old. So I already had a pretty good base of strength with that. So my first victory was muscle up. Then I would probably say my second major victory was doing like handstands. And then maybe, I don't know, I did like back levers and, you know, handstand push-ups, just different movements that come along the way. And, setting PRs in terms of, oh, how many pull-ups can I do full range of motion or dips and weighted calisthenics, different things of that nature. So I feel like when it comes down to skill training and calisthenics, it's almost intuitive to what's the next progression for you in terms of doing calisthenics and what's the next movement that you're gonna be able to accomplish. Because a lot of times when you accomplish or you unlock one movement, you end up unlocking a batch of movements. And that's kind of something that's been happening for me lately. And me and James were actually speaking about this earlier, is that, you know, one thing me and James are firm believers on is the seven days per week training method. And a lot of times when it comes down to it, you're putting so much volume in, you know, sometimes you're not gonna feel your best. I, I saw a video recently with this, with this girl who was, uh, I wanna say she was a gymnast and she was going to the Olympics in 2016, I believe. I don't even really know what her name was. It was just some small clip I saw. And she was saying that she felt horrible on her way out to the Olympics. And her coach was like, ah, oh, no, nah, it's all good. Like, you know, it's the rule of thirds. You know, one third of the time you feel terrific. One third of the time you feel average. And then one third of the time you feel absolutely awful. And life is kind of like this in training and it's also kind of like this in in the real world or you know training is a real world but in every other aspect of life as well is that we're never we're not always going to feel optimal and a lot of times the days that we do feel optimal are really unexpected and james was actually speaking on this earlier is that a lot of times when he hit prs were on days where he actually woke up feeling the worst you know another aspect of all this is you know how this all ties into life in general is that a lot of times we have you know, hardships, we have setbacks, we have plateaus. These come in, in every area of life. They come in the financial aspect of life. You know, we deal with setbacks, we deal with loss. We could deal with loss of money. We can deal with loss of, you know, people or, you know, material things. You know, nothing in this life is forever. Nothing in this life is permanent. People aren't permanent. Your life isn't permanent. That's the reason why you kind of have to like cherish everything that you kind of have and basically push everything to the limit. And what I mean by pushing everything to the limit, I don't mean that you have to go out and do all sorts of extreme stuff, but you have to stay in the present and then you have to like force yourself to get through all these mental barriers and all these mental roadblocks. And sometimes we can start something out and we end up quitting because it doesn't materialize in the time span that we 
anticipated it to materialize. And actually, I want to talk about something else that's actually uh, a pretty like personal thing as well. Not necessarily with me, but so if you guys have seen my videos and follow me for for a while, you you know my stepdad had got murdered uh, earlier this year, and my mom has just been kind of just going through it this year, and you know. But throughout all that, she's had some hardships this year, you know, multiple different hardships in different areas of life. Um, but my mother is an artist, and throughout all my life, she's always been consistent with her artwork. Maybe she hasn't been just completely going as hard as she could because she's been somebody who's been working. She's been somebody who, she went back to school at the age of 52 years old to uh, pursue her PhD so she could end up being a university professor, changing careers. She's just been doing a lot of different things, but she's always stayed consistent with her art throughout the year. And then she recently got uh, her work put into this exhibit out where she lives. And, you know, basically what ended up happening with this is that this one exhibit has led to a lot of other people coming in and inviting her to put her work in other exhibits. I think she's gonna be doing some exhibit out in Washington, D.C. And then there's another one out in Detroit that was interested in you know, having her display her art there. And you know, there's even another one, I believe, out in Montreal that she just hit me about yesterday and was telling me that her art's gonna be in that one as well. So basically, it's almost the same thing as like, putting in all these reps and sets of your calisthenics movements. It's just in another area of life. She's been putting all these reps and sets in with her artwork. And, you know, most people, if they don't get that external validation or they don't get the, you know, basically the tree doesn't start bearing fruit when they want it, they stop watering the, the tree. They stop watering the plants when it doesn't, you know, bear fruit or it doesn't break pay dirt in the time span that they actually want it to break pay dirt. So, you know, when you stay walking by faith and you have faith in the process or you have faith in yourself, you have faith in what you're doing, you have faith in basically whatever it is that brings you passion and whatever brings you joy, what your mission in life is, you know, it might take 10 years to materialize. It might take five years to materialize. Sometimes it might materialize in a year. We never really know. But the main thing is, is that we just have to enjoy the process and, you know, stay 10 toes in on what we're doing and, you know, of course we can adapt to certain things and different things of that nature, but we have to have trust in the process. And it's funny because I actually saw something else on Instagram. It's just different people have different mentalities, but one of my friends is a very like business savvy, business minded type of guy. And his mentality, or at least he had just posted something that I think speaks on his mentality. And basically said, if, some, if, so if you don't start making money in 36 months, then it's not a business, it's a hobby. And I don't necessarily agree with that, to be completely honest with you, because, you know, I think the grandest things in life that we work on and the biggest successes that we're ever going to have in life are things that are actually going to take 10, 20, 30 years. And if we're lucky enough to stick with something that long, we're going to accomplish something so great that it's probably going to basically outlast us by hundreds, maybe even thousands of years. And, you know, I'm probably rambling on on this a little bit, but I just kind of wanted to share with you guys my thoughts on how everything is connected and how calisthenics is really a faith-based practice. Even though it's a physical practice, there's still a lot of faith that goes into it. All right, guys, so I'm going to briefly interrupt this video. I want to invite you guys to train with me. You can hit up my website, that's TravelStanks.com. You can either work with me one-on-one -on -one through one-on-one -on -one online calisthenics coaching, uh, I can create a custom 12-week program for you. I have a 12-week program for intermediates and I have an eight-week program for beginners. So hit up my website, TravelSanks.com. I also have some other digital products on there as well as these growth season hats. This one is the five panel hat. I also have a bucket hat available as well. I'm gonna have more merch coming out soon, but I wanna just start off and get the growth season brand going. So if you guys wanna support the channel, you guys wanna support the movement, the community, Hit up the website, TravelCynics.com. You can either train with me, scoop up a digital product, or scoop up uh, some merchandise. Back to the video. So essentially, my question to you guys is, are you going to water those seeds without, you know, seeing those instant results? Are you going to, you know, put the work in without seeing that instant gratification? This is a question we all kind of have to ask ourselves. 
And I, it was something that we all have to catch ourselves in because for me, in calisthenics, I completely understand the fa faith aspect of calisthenics. And you know, patience is something I'm, I've grown accustomed to in calisthenics. But when it comes down to making money or when it comes down to you know just different aspects of life, sometimes I end up wanting something to materialize super quick. And I was just having a conversation with G. We was on our way back from uh, San Jose. We went to a jazz festival. So me and G were on our way back from San Jose the other day and I was just chopping it up with G about how the Bay Area has a lot of opportunities in terms of finances. And I was just telling him like, man, I need to make something happen real quick out here. And then basically later on that night, I actually caught myself going against my own faith principle or going against the faith principle because this whole walking by faith thing and you know, delayed gratification, this is not my principle. This is not my ideology. This is a universal law. And, you know, I see it manifest all over the place with different people in different industries. And, you know, if you put it into practice yourself, you'll actually experience it for yourself. I've experienced it for myself in life. And like I said, it actually took me a long time to actually get to the point where I really started practicing that delayed gratification opposed to always looking for that instant gratification. I think where I come from and the mentality of the people who I grew up with was always like fast money, fast life, fast everything. When it came down to women, money, uh, any type of thing that you're working on, you want fast results. And if you don't get fast results, it's like, oh, quit this hustle and let's get to the next thing. And that's the thing is like, that's a hustle. That's not like a practice. That's not something that you become a master of. Hustles, you don't, you don't come become a master of a hustle. You become a master of your own process. Like I said, I've been, having ups and downs in my life. And recently I've had some struggles in certain areas of my life. And then I've had extreme successes in other areas of my life. I'd say with my calisthenics journey, man, the fruit has just been falling off the tree. You know, I've had faith for so long and now the fruit is just falling off the tree. I'm just being able to do movements that I never thought I'd be able to do. And it's just because I've been putting the work in and being consistent for so long. But like I said, we need to apply this calisthenics faith or I need to apply this calisthenics faith and faith in the other areas of my life and not expect that instant gratification and for you guys maybe you guys can chime in in the comment section uh, what are some of your strategies about dealing with instant gratification and not being suckered into that instant gratification mindset and how do you practice delayed gratification is it through calisthenics is it through you know investments what it, what is it you know what I mean so this is a conversation, you know, like I said, I don't like to talk at you guys. I just like to bring up a topic, give you guys my take on it, and then we chop it up from there. But anyways, guys, if you guys need, again, if you guys need any help with your calisthenics journey, I do custom programs. I, I can make a custom 12 week program for you. We can have a consultation and chop it up about it. Or you guys can work with me one-on-one -on -one with online calisthenics coaching. You guys can scoop up one of my other programs on my website. I have a beginner program, also an intermediate program, and some other digital products as well on there, as well as a couple hats that you guys can scoop up. Growth Season is the brand that I'm pushing right now, and uh, I'm going to be coming out with more merch with the Growth Season, but uh, for right now, I just got this five-panel hat, and I also have a bucket hat with the Growth Season uh, logo on it. But anyways, guys, hope everybody's having a great day out there. I'll holler at you guys later. Peace.